put upon us. And we declare our belief in him, that there is no deity worthy of worship except for God Almighty, and that Muhammad, may God's peace, mercy, and blessings be upon him, is his messenger and servant, and mercy to all of mankind. My dear brothers and sisters, it has been almost six months now since the conclusion of the month of Ramadan, so we're halfway there. We're looking forward again. And I mention that because Ramadan is known as the month of the Qur'an. And for many of us, that is the time of the year in which we connect to the Qur'an. And in today's khutbah, I'd like to, to share with you or encourage myself and, and all of you to reconnect to the Qur'an at this time of the year as well. In fact, throughout the year. Because the Qur'an is a spring of light. It's a, it's a it's sweet-tasting water in a, in a dry desert. It's a book of beauty. It's a book of elegance and eloquence and inspiration. It's a book of psychology and insight and enlightenment. It's a book of instruction on how we may successfully conduct ourselves in this life, in this short period of time that we have here, so that when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be a, a moment of triumph, not a moment of despair. The Qur'an, my, my dear brothers and sisters, describes itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an in the Qur'an as the reminder. That's one of the titles of the Qur'an, al-dhikr. It is al-furqan, the criterion, the thing that we use to distinguish between good and bad. It is also al-kitab, the book. And in this book, let me just ask, how many of us have read the entirety of the Qur'an since the conclusion of the month of Ramadan, in its entirety. All right, that's excellent. No one raised their hands because you want to demonstrate humility. Excellent. But how many of us have read the entirety of the Qur'an in the language that we understand, whether it be Arabic or English or Urdu, or whatever language it is that you speak as your native language? How many of us have studied the Qur'an or read the Qur'an and read it along with the, trans, with the tafsir and the commentary. The Qur'an is a book to be studied. And when we re-examine the Qur'an and reconnect to the Qur'an, we find ourselves inspired and empowered to be able to tackle the challenges that life has to throw our way. We oftentimes find ourselves in a predicament as an ummah facing this tragedy around the world, this depressing situation, this uh, uh, catastrophe, human catastrophe unfolding, whether it be in Syria or in other parts of the world in which human lives are being lost in great number, great numbers. And sometimes this affects our faith. This affects our state of iman. And it is my message to you here today that as a true believer, no matter what befalls us, our faith should not be shaken. Our resolve should be stimulated. And we should ask ourselves, how do we respond to this? But it should not affect our faith because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us. He is reported to have taught his, his followers, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min. فَإِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ It's incredible, the state of the true believer. It's, in, it's incredible. It's amazing. It's astounding. The true believer, the true believer's state of mind, experience is, is incredible. Why? إِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ سَرَّا شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ Beautiful, succinct, encapsulated in just two sentences. The entirety of how we may endure this life and all that it may offer us by way of challenges and trials and tribulations. The translation of, these, of this hadith is as follows. He says, 
Incredible is the situation, the affairs of a true believer. And, those of, and that is not the case for anyone but a mu'min. He said, if, if anything, if any believer is afflicted with something beautiful, something wonderful, some happy occurrence, some felicitous occasion, a true believer responds with gratitude. And ultimately, that response is good for the heart of the believer. It's good for the soul of the believer. And if that believer, if that true believer, if that mu'min is afflicted by a calamity, by some harm or injury, then he or she is patient. And that is good for him or her. Now, patience is not just sitting around and waiting. Patience is having the right state of mind, and I've spoken about this before. But this is ultimately the summation of everything that we can encounter in our life. We're either fortunate or unfortunate. We either face some kind of, uh, of uh, blessing from God, as we would interpret it. We succeed in our, in our school. We succeed in our work. We succeed in our personal life and our relationships. And the true believer's response to that, the mu'min's response to that, is recognition, acknowledgement that all of those blessings come from God ultimately. We didn't cause them to happen, no matter how hard we tried. I was speaking to a youth group the other day about this very point, and one of them said, no, no, I worked hard for my money. I earned it. That's my money, and I, I deserve it. I'm the one who gets credit for having received that money. But then we started unpacking it a little bit, and we said, okay, you, you worked hard. You exerted your effort. Beautiful. In what capacity did you exert your effort and use your intelligence to, to uh, obtain that money? They said, well, I did a paper route or I moved the garbage cans of my neighbor and I mowed the yard. I said, beautiful. Uh, with what physical body did you do that? They said, well, this one, this one. So where did that come to you by? Allah. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. What about the opportunity to mow your neighbor's lawn? Who happened to have extra money that he could throw your way? Okay, from God. These opportunities, what about the intellect that you use to make the decision on how you're going to use the resources that you have? That came from God too. All right, now we're getting somewhere. It's a matter of gratitude. No matter how hard we work, and we need to work hard, ultimately... Our attitude should be one of gratitude when something comes our way, when we're successful. Because no matter how hard we work, how much effort we put in, it's all fruitless if it isn't by the will of God that we succeed. And sometimes we have the attitude that if something, something bad happens to us, God is punishing us. My dear brothers and sisters, that is not the case. God is not punishing you in this world if something bad happens to you. Not necessarily. Because when we experience a hardship in life, it's because we need to experience that hardship in order to grow our character. And Allah is putting us through tests, through challenges, through trials and tribulations so that we may learn from them, so that we may fail, but then seek repentance and ask for forgiveness, so that we may make a wrong decision and then feel bad because maybe our decision resulted in harming someone else or ourselves or at least in transgressing against God, and we may feel bad, and we may grow our hearts and our souls through that experience, and that we may return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. Or if we experience a, a harsh illness or the death of a loved one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises He's going to give those to us. In the Quran, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ for certain, God will try you and test you of something of fear, of hunger, the loss of your, of your money, of, the, of a beloved one, the fruits of your labor. You will lose some of those. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. So the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, is a guide for us on how we may navigate through this life. And when we face, when we consider the state of the ummah and sometimes the politics and this and that and the environment is sometimes negative, 
against our community. It sometimes affects our faith, but it should never affect the faith of a true believer because they could throw anything at us. It's all good as long as we respond in the right way. And that's what the Quran teaches us. The Quran is a guide. It's a, it's a book of psychology. It helps us understand our own psychology. It's a book of, of parables. The, book, the Quran is a book of parables. Now, a parable is an example that has a deeper meaning. And there are many parables in the Quran. And, the, and, the, and God tells us in the Quran, it's for people who reflect, people who think. These parables are for people who yatafakkarun, yaqilun, yata'amalun, people who ponder, reflect, think about. This is what God is encouraging us to do. There's a parable in the Quran, for example, of someone who is deaf, dumb, and blind. Summun bukmun umyun. Now these are parables. There's a, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us right at the beginning that this Qur'an is for people who have taqwa. This is a message for people who have taqwa, people who have a conscientiousness of God, an awareness of God, a sensitivity to the presence of God. That's what this Qur'an is for. And for those who have that in their heart, when they read the book, it should affect the heart. The heart should be moved by reading the Qur'an, truly, listening to what the Qur'an is saying. And if your heart is not moved when you read the Qur'an and you realize that God is speaking to you, check yourself. Check your heart. In the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim, three letters of the alphabet. A-L-M. We don't know exactly what they mean. There's all kinds of perspect, uh, pers uh, uh, interpretations according to the different mufassirin. Some say that it's just, it's an indication that there, it's in the language that we can understand. It's letters of an alphabet that has meaning. We put them together in a certain order that conveys meaning. In, un, in, any, in any case, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. This is the book in which there is no doubt. Huda lil muttaqeen. It's a guide. It's a guidance for those who have taqwa, for those who have this who are tuned in to God, who have a reverence for God, who have a consciousness of God. There's a very famous story of an American icon, an American idol from back in the 70s, Cat Stevens. And some of you may know who he is, Yusuf Islam. He ended up embracing Islam. And someone asked him, how is it that you, that you ended up converting to this religion? He said, my brother sent me a copy of this Quran in English, a translation. He was on travels. He encountered it somewhere. He mailed it to me. He received it. He read it. And he said it spoke to his heart. He said, finally, the answers he's been looking for. And if you listen to his music, you saw, you could see in his lyrics, he was searching. He was a searching, he was a person, a human being who was on a spiritual quest, trying to find the answers in life. And when he read the Quran, it answered his questions. He found guidance in the Quran. The Quran is a powerful book. If we were to just take the cover off our heart and read it and try and connect with it and realize that this is God speaking to you. I met a brother who is 23 years old. He, was, he, was, he came out to study at the at Bayan Claremont, the Islamic graduate school out in Claremont where I'm serving as dean and president. And I said, how is it that you came to be a Muslim? You're a young man, 23 years old, from North Carolina. You weren't raised Muslim, you were raised Christian. He said, my grandmother, she's not Muslim either, but she sent me, she gave me as a birthday present when I was 17 years old, a copy of the Quran. She knew I was looking, I was trying to find answers. She gave me a copy of the Quran. She said, you might like this. And he, and he read it, and it spoke to his heart, and he converted to Islam. I met someone who converted to Islam, this is a true story. He was a thug, a thief. A self-described thug and thief. And he, he was a member of a gang and this and that. He was a, wasn't a very good person. And he, one day he was in a bookstore and he stole a copy, not of the Quran, but of a book of poetry by Rumi, who wrote about the Quran and the message of Islam. He stole a poetry book of Rumi and he read it and he converted to Islam. 
He converted to Islam by stealing a book about Islam. Subhanallah. But the heart can speak. You can come into the religion different ways. I met a brother once, or I came to know of a brother once, who was helping someone move. And they had a van, and the, the back was full with all the stuff, and they were driving, and they came to a stop, and something flew from the back of the van and hit him in the head. It was a book. It was the Qur'an. The Qur'an literally hit him in the head. He picked it up and said, what is this? He read it. He converted to Islam. Subhanallah. Let us reconnect to the Qur'an, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a book for guidance and it answers our questions. It's not just to get in the door, to become part of the family of, 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 of Islam, part of the tribe. No, the, this Qur'an is a book of guidance that helps elevate our character, helps us understand and process all of the complexity of this life. It helps inspire us and encourage us to take the high road, to make the right decision, to live a moral life. Let us reflect on this day of Jum'ah in which we're gathered today to remember God Almighty, to be grateful for, uh, to Him for what He has given us, the many blessings, but included amongst them is the Qur'an. Let us ask Him for forgiveness and for guidance. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters, we are halfway between last Ramadan and this coming Ramadan, and this is a good time for us to reconnect to the Quran. The Quran, when we we feel it in the month of Ramadan, we're energized, we're re-energized in that month. And this is a perfect time for us to open the Qur'an again if, we, if we've had it closed and protected and wrapped and put on a high shelf. Dust it off. Bring it down. Crack it open. Let us read and reconnect and study the Qur'an. The Qur'an is a book of history. It's a book of stories. Stories that describe the human predicament. It's a book of moral weight. It helps us understand our responsibility in life. And the Quran says so. The, the, the Prophet is instructed in the Quran that we will send upon you a heavy word. A heavy word, a heavy text. It's morally heavy. So he was instructed to pray and to prepare himself for receiving such a heavy message. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, that message isn't just for the Prophet Muhammad, we've inherited it. That message is for us, it's a heavy message. So let us understand it, let us prepare ourselves by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by reading the Qur'an, by asking God to teach us, teach us through the Qur'an, how we may fulfill our responsibility in this life. The Qur'an is a book of psychology and of spirituality. There's a, there's a, uh, a surah in the Qur'an that connects the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's early, early steps in his mission as, a, as the Prophet. His early steps, he was a, a person, a human being who was seeking, like those other people I talked about, maybe of a higher order, but he was a person nonetheless, he was seeking. And when he started receiving revelation, he had these insecurities, and I've spoken about this before but I wanted to re-emphasize it here because here we see in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this human effort, this human yearning to to have his questions answered and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells him in Surah Duha Wadduha Ba'da'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wadduha by the early morning light Wal-Layli Ida Saja and the night when it is when it is still. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor has he abandoned you. Let's just pause there for a second. This is, a, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to the Prophet through the, the vehicle of the Qur'an. But this isn't just a message to the Prophet. This is a message to, to us, to you, to your heart. Sometimes you feel like it's overwhelming. You are abandoned. Allah is promising you. 
Your Lord has not abandoned you, nor has He, uh, your Lord is not angry with you, nor has He forsaken you. And here's some hope that the next world, no matter what you're facing now and the, the harshness of it, for certain the next world will be better for you than the, than the former, than this one. And your Lord will give you and you will be satisfied. So there's hope. There's hope. If you have, I don't know if anyone is, is, is involved in sports or long distance running or any kind of endurance activity, maybe doing a marathon stint at work or you have some large task ahead of you. When you have an end goal, that you can see when there's light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how tired you are, no matter how exhausted you are, you see that and you can push yourself a little bit farther. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here. No matter how hard it is for you, as an individual, as an ummah, the next life will be better. Just keep pushing through. Do the right thing. Make the hard decision, but do the right one. And your Lord will give you and you will be pleased. And then he reminds the Prophet, but reminds us as well. Did he not find you an orphan and give you protection, give you support? And find you astray, find you adrift and give you guidance? And found you destitute and gave you, gave you the means to support, to be sufficient, self sufficient. And then comes the ask. Then comes the commandment. So as for the one who is less fortunate, the one who is the, or, the orphan, the one who doesn't have the parent, doesn't have the parental support, and is is utterly dependent upon the, the kindness of others, and we can find many of them in today's world because of all of the wars and conflict. Don't turn away the orphan. And don't turn away the one who is asking. And as for the blessings and bounty of your Lord, speak about them. Go out. Remind people of the many blessings because if we sometimes take it for granted. This is a book that tells us to not be pessimistic, not to be downtrodden, despite the fact that there are poor and orphaned and sick and ill and dying and oppressed people. Go forward. There's much to be grateful for. There's much beauty to be spoken about. Go forward and be a beacon of light. Be a witness to God's, to gratitude to God's blessing. I'll conclude as I started. My dear brothers and sisters, the Qur'an is a book that is sent from God to you. It is a book, it is a 